the unintended consequences of US-UK strikes on Houthi rebels. Hello and welcome. I am Jeremy Tasfaye and this is News Analytica. Since November 19, Houthi rebels have been launching a barrage of attacks on at least 33 commercial vessels navigating the Red Sea, deploying a diverse array of weapons, crews and ballistic missiles, drones and rockets, all in solidarity with the Palestinian cause. In response, the US and its allies launched Operation Prosperity Guardian on December 18. Since then, the US and its allies have launched multiple air strikes against Yemen, including eight large-scale air and missile strikes on Houthi facilities across Yemen earlier this week. In addition, the US government, in a significant move, redesignated Yemen's Houthi rebels as a terrorist organization. Both the US and the UK have imposed new sanctions on the leaders of Yemen's Houthis. The attacks by the US-led flotilla has, however, failed to deter the Houthis, and the Houthi leader boldly declared that the military actions by the US and Britain will not waver their will and determination. The group has escalated its attacks, directly targeting US commercial and warships. The Houthis have pledged to persist with these attacks until food and medicine reach the struggling people of Gaza. In today's episode, we we'll delve into the Houthi attacks and look at how the reactions from the US and its allies have complicated the situation. Since November, the Houthis have launched increasingly sophisticated attacks against maritime targets, damaging commercial vessels linked with Israel crossing the Red Sea. It's a strategic move, intricately framed in solidarity with the Palestinians, positioning the Houthis as active players in the broader geopolitical landscape. In response, the US and UK militaries supported by Australia, Bahrain, Canada, and the Netherlands launched decisive airstrikes against the Houthis earlier this week. Eight Houthi targets in Yemen were hit, including underground storage sites and targets associated with the rebels' missile and air surveillance capabilities. This marks the second occasion UK and US forces have jointly conducted air and missile strikes against the Houthis since their attacks on international shipping began in November. At the same time, the Pentagon has reported that the US military has launched multiple rounds of smaller scale strikes in response to what they deemed an imminent threat. Despite these efforts, the Houthi rebels remained undeterred, persisting in their attacks on commercial vessels in the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden. The Houthis say their attacks aim to pressure Israel to halt its deadly onslaught on the Gaza Strip, which has killed over 24,000 people and injured more than 60,000 others since it started in October. The attacks by the Houthis has disrupted shipping in one of the major global trade routes, raising costs by as much as 300%. But more importantly, these attacks have bolstered the Houthis as major players in the Red Sea. Before the war on Gaza started, the Houthis fought a decade-long civil war with the Saudi-backed Yemeni government. The war plunged Yemen into what the United Nations termed the world's worst humanitarian crisis. According to the UN estimates, 21.6 million people, or two-thirds of Yemeni's population, are in dire need of humanitarian assistance. However, a ceasefire deal signed in April 2022 drastically reduced the fighting. But with fewer external threats, domestic trouble surfaced in the Houthi-controlled areas. Poverty, unpaid government salaries, crumbling infrastructure led to growing disquiet over the Houthi governance. However, Israel's attack in Gaza provided renewed purpose for the Houthis, allowing them to reassert their relevance by aligning with the Palestinian cause. By firing missiles toward Israel, the Houthis strategically positioned themselves as the lone force in the Arab Peninsula, standing up to Israel, diverging from regional powers like Saudi Arabia and Egypt. The recent US-led airstrikes, rather than diminishing their image, has played into the group's narrative, reinforcing the perception among Arab countries that they are fighting oppressive foreign enemies attacking Yemen. Internally, the Houthis have managed to rally domestic support and have leveraged the attacks to gain strategic advantages over local rivalries. Following US-UK strikes on Houthi targets, spokesperson Yahya Sari declared an expansion of attacks in the Red Sea, stating any coalition attack on Yemen would prompt strikes on all shipping through the strategic Bab el Mandeb Strait. While this truce between Saudi Arabia and the Houthis has resulted in a deadlock, the US-UK strikes place Houthi opponents in a difficult position. Hesitant to openly support Western intervention, they also find it challenging to blame the Houthis for supporting Palestinians, given widespread sympathy for Gazanians in Yemen. 
The Yemeni transitional government statement after the strikes highlight this predicament, blaming the Houthis for terrorist attacks while reaffirming support for Palestinians against brutal Israeli aggression exemplifies the delicate balancing act faced by Houthi rivals. An emboldened Houthi group, unrestricted by such constraints, may push for more control, potentially reigniting the civil war. The Houthis, thriving on this external conflict, now add US and UK interference to their narrative, using it to hide their governance weakness in the places they control in Yemen. As the impact of these military interventions takes shape, it prompts a reconsideration of strategies. Perhaps, in this complex web of regional dynamics, it is time to explore alternative avenues, emphasizing the potential efficacy of diplomacy and negotiation to de-escalate the violence in Gaza and negotiate a settlement in Yemen. That is all for today. Thank you for watching. Make sure to join us again tomorrow for another edition of News Analytics.